The views and opinions of this show is not necessarily the views and opinions of the National Hockey League, its affiliates, or sponsors. A Shot from the Point contains dark humor and foul language and is intended for mature audiences only. To summarize the previous, this isn't your grandma's radio show, and I'm not Foster Huey. the man from the heart of Europe. This is the most badass hockey podcast in all the known man's land. This is a shot from the point. I'm Tommy C, your host. We're flying solo here t- this week on a shot from the point due to some scheduling issues with a very, very sad Jake Link. The great Jake Link. Jake, buddy, this is for you, buddy. Just think of that. Rock and roll is And of course, if you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, the Rangers defeat the New Jersey Devils 4-1. to And what is so significant about this game is that this is the elimination game. Yes, death has come to the 2013 series for those New Jersey Devils. What a change of events. What the hell is that? Ah, God, I should have known better. Should have checked that. What have changed in the events? How, how things have changed for the New York Rangers. How things have changed for the New Jersey Devils. If you look back where early in the season, the Devils had a very comfortable spot in the playoffs. Marty Rodor has some uh, injury issues and what have you. There was just no doubt in anybody's mind that the Devils would be in a comfortable playoff spot this time of year. But Marty has injury issues. Uh, Kovalchuk goes down two weeks ago. And dead on Dave said it early on, with a shortened season like this, if you have a 10-game losing streak, a big losing streak, especially late in the season, you're finished. You're done. And that's exactly what happened this year to the New Jersey Devils. Now, Looking at the Devils, uh, you didn't see a team that quit. You didn't see a team that folded. You saw a team that simply doesn't have the talent to score goals at a National Hockey League level. They're, they lost the Parises of the world. Eliash is not what he used to be. Guys didn't perform where it really counted the most. They were a solid defensive team. They were a well-coached team. But ultimately, the most important aspect of the game is to put it in the net at the end of the night, and the New Jersey Devils were not able to do it. Now, if you take a look early on in the New York Rangers season, they have a very disappointing start. There's questions whether it was a good idea to bring in one Rick Nash, even though he has been consistent all year for the Rangers. Questions that sending Dubinsky to... Well, Columbus, who may actually end up making the playoffs before this is all said and done, currently a seed in the Western Conference, was really a good idea. But that, in a trade at the trade deadline, Gabrick going to Columbus, which has worked out spectacular for the Blue Jackets, with that trade, with the struggling team, a, a team teetering between the 7th, 8th, and ninth playoff seed spot. 
you see a new Ranger team emerge, and with just a blip against Philadelphia. Other than that, this is the most consistent the Rangers have been playing all year, and they're able to overcome and eliminate the New Jersey Devils. Would you have ever guessed it? Would you have guessed it in a million years? Would you would have thought the Rangers wouldn't be at the top of the standings? Would you have thought the Devils would not have been able to maintain and get back deep in the Stanley Cup playoffs? No. Now, that being said, the Rangers' fight is far from over. They, ha- they must maintain with Winnipeg on their heels and with the New York Islanders not looking like they're going to lose a game the rest of the season. Also, I'd like to point out, I called it early on. This Devil team, or excuse me, this New York Islander team is very good, very underrated. They have a very solid goaltender in net. They have an underrated superstar, and they have Mr. Tavares, who's one of the top goal scorers in the league for the season. What we've seen here is incredible run. The Islanders are not are no longer the Rangers' problem. It is now Winnipeg. And all they have to do now is win. Let's not make it interesting. Let's not blow it. We eliminated the Devils. It almost feels, and I, I, I wonder if this can actually affect the players. It feels like it might affect, like, like they won, that like they, they, they clinched. They did not clinch tonight. It was almost like this Philadelphia hangover they got when they beat the uh, Islanders in overtime, which is a spectacular game. Maybe a future series in the playoffs. Wouldn't that be something? Renew that rivalry. And they came out against a Philadelphia team that barely was playing mathematically in it at that point, but really barely in it. And looked like the Rangers pre-trade. But no, the Rangers overcome. Why are you talking about the Rangers so much? Because I can't. And the game just ended. At the time of this recording, this game ended. And it's big. It's big for me. Definitely best for the Eastern Conference. And let's face it. The Mo- what are we going to talk about? Montreal. We're going to talk about Boston. We're going to talk about the great season the Penguins have had. The Bay- All that's over. All that matters is DC. Same thing with the Western Conference. With Detroit making things interesting out of there. Like 7,000 years. I didn't even think they made- missed the playoffs one year I was alive. I didn't know they missed it 20 years ago. Detroit, looking like they might not make the playoffs. And Columbus, a team that was all but considered dead after the trade deadline. Excuse me. A team that was all but considered dead this season. Never did. With the uh, heart that the Rangers trade over there. And with Gabrick eventually going over there. This looks like a rejuvenated team as well. They are building something in Columbus, folks. Whether anybody goes to see it or anybody cares, I don't know. But this is a fighting, fighting hockey team. Wow. I don't even feel like being goofy tonight. I don't feel like it at all. Very, very happy the Ranger wins, but they must remember this did not clinch the playoffs. Winnipeg will fight. In the West, Columbus will fight. They don't have enough talent, but there's a core there, a core they can build with. Maybe make a big move during the offseason, but they probably have no money because they play in Columbus, and there never should have been a team there to begin with. The Blue Jackets. I'm Tommy C. from A Shot from the Point. I have no host today. I have just me flying solo. Very lonely here in the Shot from the Point studios. I have been, uh, uh, due to some scheduling issues, I, I can't uh, get tight with Jake. And I something tells me I really doubt that he would uh, like to be on right now anyway. Because all I would do is bust his balls. Quite simple. I would just bust his balls. This has been a crazy week, of course, in the news media. Um, without being a bit macabre, I actually enjoyed the news probably the most since 1991 Gulf War. Uh, the uh, Boston murderers, the Boston Marathon bombers, um, were finally caught up with due to the fact that you probably can't drop a bomb in public in a major first world city anymore because there's just too many people taking pictures at all times. It's almost like 24-hour surveillance, subconscious surveillance. The Boston bombers were brought to justice 
One with a bullet in his head or his body or God who cares. And then about 24 hours later, the second suspect, 19-year-old, no, I don't care, don't care, was brought to justice through some spectacular work by the Boston Police Department. And although I probably don't agree with him anything politically, that Boston mayor, uh, I know he's going to take a lot of heat from uh, libertarian types, uh, maybe some lefty types, but I absolutely think he did the right thing on locking down the city and going door to door because we can't have guys like this running around our cities. It's a, not an easy call. That's not the America we know. We see uh, armies running around. But for all you people posting on Facebook saying, oh, this is an America. This is... You got to find this guy. You got to do what you can. And as soon as the coast was clear, they opened the doors, and then they found them. You can't just go on pretending there's not a madman around. If there's a guy, if he's in a terrorist cell, he maybe a give him time to communicate, get healthy, and do it again. Because now he's really got nothing to lose. And that's not an easy call by any mayor. I'm going to give him uh, the benefit. Don't do too much about him. I know he's a Democrat, so he's probably not my favorite. But I got, to be honest with you, that was a rough call. He made it. They did it right. They didn't keep everybody in all day. And that particular move and the great work of the Boston Police Department, the great work of the FBI. They deserve all the praise there. And I'm sure my bodies in the National Guard, Army who uh, lended some great support that we don't know about. But they did a spectacular job, and we have these maniacs, and we're going to find out a lot more about them. And I'm, I'm uh, very happy. I, uh, I've been really... Ta I, I did something, and I, I, I was going to report on it, but I, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't have the stomach. Uh, there was a little boy killed, a uh, Boston Bruins fan, and it, it probably was important to this show. And uh, I'm not going to cover it in the news, at least not this week, because I just I, I couldn't stomach it. I can't imagine a little boy a lot like me, a lot like a lot of you that would listen to the show. You know, somebody who hangs around the rink, who uh, grabs his rollerblades as soon as he uh, gets out of dinner. And uh, I can't imagine him being blown apart by these selfish men who were given the American dream, succeeded in the American dream, and decided to give in to murder to satisfy or whatever their beliefs are, or whatever hate they have in their heart. One of these guys went to Cambridge. I would have loved to gone to Cambridge, but I didn't have those gifts. And I'm a national, uh, natural born American. And this guy used his gifts to kill a bunch of women and children, to permanently maim people for the rest of their lives. That's what he decided to use it for. And I'm a little fucking sick and tired of being told not to rush to judgment. Yeah, actually, I'm really sick and tired. Because right after this bombing happened, that Turk that runs that show, The Young Turks, I can't even say his name, it's so stupid, openly praying that it's a white guy, that it's a Tea Party member. For as far as I've known, any Tea Party uh, protest, there hasn't been so much of a, an arrest. For a reporter on Salon.com openly rooting that it's a white guy that committed this. For Chris Matthews of CNBC saying that most domestic terrorism is right wing. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Remember the SLA? Oh, you probably forgot because uh, they're a little closer to your political beliefs. One of the biggest terrorist attacks took place by a right winger. That would be one Timothy McVeigh. Guy was caught, punished. Nobody on the sane right or left would have found anything in common with him. Can you imagine if somebody said, 
I hope this was a black guy. Because I hope it was a black guy because it helps my worldview along. And it proves what I believe about black people. No, you wouldn't hurt it because it's racist. And what these guys said was racist too. And it's amazing to me, the conspiracy theories, and it's amazing to me how people will try to hold their worldviews together. The President of the United States administration as top terror suspects or profiles to look at early on in 2009 were white soldiers that might be coming back after a tour in Iraq, that they might not be able to find jobs. These were people that were supposed to be engaging in terrorist actions. To my knowledge, since Barack Obama has been elected, there's been no such thing. Who did those ricin attacks? Why did that die out? Why did that die out? Guarantee he wasn't a Tea Party member. You'd have heard it by now. White soldiers coming back from Iraq committing crimes. This is a top priority. A top priority for law enforcement agencies. This is a group of people to keep an eye on. Yet, when Muslims commit these crimes, we're not supposed to jump to conclusions. We can go on television and we can blame whites, blame soldiers, but we can't jump to conclusions. We can openly root for it to be a white guy, to hold our worldviews together. We can post on Facebook. We can post on Facebook and make it conspiracy to fit our worldview. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. How does this tie into hockey? It doesn't. Two games got canceled. There you go. You happy? Don't like it? Turn it off. Don't care. Don't care. You didn't put the money into this. You don't put the time in it. You don't get to talk. I'm yelling at somebody that's not here. It's amazing. Yeah, we're not supposed to jump to conclusions. I wasn't 100% sure that this was a, a Muslim attack, and... We don't know the uh, motivations. We know, uh, as of now, Drudge Report reports two Kazakhstanis arrested. Folks from Kazakhstan. I think you could be pretty much anything from Kazakhstan. Uh, we're getting a new part of uh, radical Islam. Far Eastern Europe. Asia. Well, excuse me. Russia borders on Chechnya, I think, is officially in Asia. So we're getting a new element, a new part of the world. It's not no it's no longer just the Middle East. Yet I'm not supposed to jump to conclusions. Even though pressure cooker bombs are a trademark of Al Qaeda. These are IEDs that are used in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're crude, effective. And definitely a guy from Cambridge could figure out how to put it together. Yet I'm not supposed to jump to conclusions. I think it would be a little rash to say it was definitely a Muslim right off the bat. And it wouldn't matter whether it was a Muslim or a righty or a lefty. Or a guy doing it to save the animals, the pigs, the whales, whatever. It doesn't matter. Get him out there. I know the left got really, really excited. Really excited. The picture. He was Caucasian. He had a baseball hat on. He might like NASCAR. Didn't happen didn't happen and there is no outrage there is no outrage for this open on the surface surface racism towards american caucasians not zero it's outrageous and every bit of outrageous is if some newspaper reporter heard a robbery in 7-Eleven and said, well, I bet it was a bunch of black kids. And that's outrageous too. You can have your theories, but they didn't sound like theories. Not from Chris Matthews. It sounded like hope. Hope. You know, these men didn't really care um, who they killed. They, they, I don't think they were checking, uh, oh, well, there's enough Caucasians here. Oh, there's a few Puerto Ricans. 
There's a few African Americans. They were looking to kill Americans. That's it. You should be outraged. You should be outraged, no matter who it was. But now, a week ago, all, uh, all um, domestic terrorism is usually right wing. Now, don't rush to judge me. You phonies, you fakes, you bigots. I don't care. It's my show. I'll do what I want. I don't give a crap. The New York Rangers, the New York Yankees, the Boston Red Sox, and the Boston Bruins, you know, this, this ridiculous sport of hockey we're in, this dumb sport we have, this violent thing, showed more class than people that work in the Beltway. Much more class than Crank Unger, who has no credibility and couldn't do anything once he got the opportunity to go on CNN or MSNBC. Disgusting. Repulsive. And as an American, I'm outraged. Absolutely outraged. These are disgusting bigots. Nothing more, nothing less. And that's all I got to say about that. The uh, reason I probably went on a rant is probably because uh, Jake keeps me in line. Dave would probably keep me going for going on like that. But uh, I had to say it. Like I said, two NHL games got, uh, my, my country got bombed for no reason other than uh, hate from two guys that I wish I had the opportunities that they did. And maybe they earned them. But they pissed them away. And they did something that I would never do. As a Irish-American veteran of the Iraq War that didn't get a very good job when it was over. Want another reason? Um, I think I'm just going to dedicate this to the uh, memory, this whole show to the memory of Martin Richard, a little Boston Bruins fan, little guy. You'll be missed, buddy. Want no other reason? I'm pissed off. I'm angry. And it's okay. It's okay to be angry. It's, it's, it's righteous to be angry. As long as you handle it the right way. You put that anger to use. Do something positive with it. That's all. It's a little tough to get into hockey when something like this happens. It's a little tough to even enjoy a uh, Rangers victory when something like this happens. So let's move on to hockey. Back to you guys. Yeah, about that time. Hey, speaking of little guys, you know this guy. Just hockey. I don't care if it's just hockey. Babe, but we can still be a fan of his. I know. He's just going to be on the Rangers now. But then we, every time we play against him, they're going to fight against him. <laughs> well, this, uh, this video, of course, went viral on YouTube. And it was a big laugh here on uh, Shop and the Point. Um, so the uh, San Jose Sharks found out about it. And... Uh, they they brought him in. Um, they brought him in the locker room, and according to uh, Mr. Greg Wachinski of Puck Daddy, yes, if I get the source from there, I have to let them know. From what I understand, so I'm not just plugging him. Actually, I I gave Wachinski a pretty hard time. He met some of the players in the locker room, including defenseman Dan Boyle, who quickly learned. Why this young pint-sized, uh, why this is a pint-sized puckhead. Here's what the boy said. I can't believe you haven't won any Stanley Cups. The boy told Boyle, who, who <laughs> politely corrected him. Boyle did win a Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2004. But you haven't won any with the Sharks. Vincent responded little <laughs> San Jose Sharks got to stop letting that kid down they do they do you know I was I was gonna play that thing yeah the things on my mind I can't stop thinking about it not really uh not in a funny mood not a funny show step 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 that step helps. step thanks Joel 
Speaking of Joe Cornyn, I, I talked to him, actually, during the... Uh, and I couldn't believe it. I got it. He, he sent me a message via YouTube. And uh, it said, you'll never believe this. I'm listening to the uh, police scanner. And I'm hearing uh, automatic about automatic gunfire and grenades. Even grenades. I guess at the time it came over as grenades. I guess it was some kind of pipe bomb or something like that. The, uh, the two suspects. Boston bombing suspects were ha- uh, throwing at the police. But I mean, it just seems sounds surreal. Hearing it from Joe, and I wrote him back. I please don't mess with me. Are you kidding me? But everything he said was right, and this was before it popped up in the news. And sure enough, within minutes, it was uh, it was all over the place. Hmm. A little tough to go on. For sure. Okay, we don't talk much Oilers hockey on this sucker. Um, something uh, happened interesting in Edmonton. Um, of course. Uh, Former 1994 Ranger, Craig McTavish, last guy to wear a helmet in the league. Um, not to wear a helmet in the league. Uh, just got the GM spot. And uh, President Kevin Lowe, awful por- former Ranger, both championships with the Edmonton Oilers, uh, give a press conference. And uh, Mr. Lowe says something interesting. I'll let you hear the whole thing. And that's all I can tell you. All right. Kevin. Well, well, I'll just add a piece to that, John. Uh, uh, you know, fair question. Um, the fans. Uh, I mean, we have we have two types of fans. We have paying oh, yeah. customers, oh. and we have people that watch the game that we still care about. But <laughs> it's um, not that much. Certainly, the the people that go to the games and support are. We 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 spend a lot of time hey, talking to help. them, delivering our message. Dig. Uh, I would. Uh, I think it's safe to say that. <laughs> I know it. I half know the general enough. managers in the National Hockey League would trade their roster for our roster. Ah, whatever. Hey, uh, Vinny, um, do you go to every? Do you have season tickets? Do you go every single game over there in Edmonton? Are you? You're half a fan. <laughs> you're not a paying customer. Not with those like twenty Oiler jerseys you have, or every friggin' hockey card you put in. So. Uh, we get a response from Mr. Kevin Lowe. Ah, they got rid of the video. So that means I'm just going to have to read uh, Kevin Lowe's apology. Yesterday was a day full of excitement and passion and emotion. I must admit, emotion ran a little high. I have a few things to say to our fans and particularly clarify. To clarify. First of all, we appreciate and are grateful of every one of our fans who cheer us through the good times and the bad. We understand that many of our fans at Rexall Place, well, I don't know, what does that mean? We understand we see many of our fans at Rexall Place, but we have hundreds of thousands of fans that never get to Rexall Place. And we appreciate every fan. I didn't make that clear. Yes, I didn't make that clear yesterday. If I offended, ah, well, I apologize, whatever. Yeah, I can't read. I'm, I'm, I'm distracted. So uh, Kevin blows it. The segment kind of blows with that, Jake, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, well, he sounds like a real corporate asshole these days. <laughs> yeah, I could see, you could see in the video that he he knows he blew it. And in defense, when Kevin goes to do the numbers, they, the bottom line is, they, they do put fans in categories. And they don't put them in categories where they're any bigger fans. They put them in categories where how much money they bring in. And those guys that go to games tend to probably buy more. Because they have more money. They can spend more. And they treat them different. Or they cater to them different. So that's really what he's talking to. But that's not something you talk about in public in a press conference. Because you kind of divide the fans. But in reality, in economic reality, Mr. Rollo's absolutely right. But nobody wants to hear that shit. Absolutely nobody. Okay, one of my favorite announcers, really the biggest blowhard announcer in the league, is uh, Jack Edwards of the Boston Bruins. And uh, Jack is, uh, he didn't really put his emotions. He is a Bruins fan of the bone, there's no doubt. But uh, uh, he makes a little sound off on Matt Cook. Could not help but notice last season when the Pittsburgh Riders nominated Matt Cook for the Masterton Award for dedication and perseverance to hockey. The justification being how Cook had changed his ways 
after basically assassinating Mark Savard. Nominating Cook for the Masterton is about the equivalent of nominating Sirhan Sirhan as the Prisoner of the Year. <laughs> outrageous lack of judgment on the part of the Pittsburgh press. Ah, because they suck. And and uh, and Jack's right. This has to do. Uh, Cook had another wonderful hit in the Boston game. Maybe we'll get to that later. Versus Pittsburgh. Ah, drop the mic. Damn it. No, I just got the damn thing. Ah, whatever. Maybe it's funny. I'll leave it in. Um, Jack's right. It, it is really amazing to me in the uh, Shanahan world that we live in that Matt Cook is just even allowed to play. Um, the man's a lunatic and probably a psychopath. And uh, it is the since Sidney Crosby's gotten to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh can't do anything wrong. They're one of the dirtiest teams in the league, just as John Tortorella said just before the playoffs last year. And uh, Sidney Crosby's changes will ways a little bit, but they're, they're probably one of the, one of the most uh, self-entitled teams in the league. With the, with the possible exception of uh, with Chris Letang, there's nobody I really like on that team. Not personally. Nobody think I... Nobody I'd like to go see. Nobody I'd like to see in a Ranger uniform with the exception of Jerome McGinley. There's nothing likable about the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're the bad guys. They got Shooter Gavin at center with a broken jaw. And there's nothing likable about the Pittsburgh Penguins. It never has been, really. I mean, well, I mean, you should go back to the Lemieux days. Yeah, there, there were. But the, uh, the Pittsburgh press or the, the, the new fans of uh, Pittsburgh. I mean, this, this franchise is basically dead until Mary Lemieux saved it. They won the Sidney Crosby uh, sweet stakes in what was it, 04 draft. And, uh, you know, they won the Stanley Cup. And they are a good team. They're real talented. You got a uh, Malkin and all there. But um, they're just a bunch of lousy people. And uh, it's too bad because I like Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh as a city. Been there. Nice place. Nice suburbs around it. Real cool city. But uh, lousy hockey fans. Lousy uh, press. And uh, really a classless uh, uh, face of the league. That's something we don't talk about too much with S- Sissy. He's the cl- most classless star we've ever had. And look, we've had some losers like Matt Cook. But uh, no one's classless like, like this This whole uh, organization. And Cook's going to kill somebody one of these days, I, I wonder. Or maybe somebody will just give him one concussion too many. I mean, the guy's a psycho. He's a nut. He's a kook. He's everything about the lay, but he just he seems to keep getting away with it and keep getting away with it. Keep getting away with it. I, I can't remember. Maybe Elf Samuelson. And he's obnoxious about it, too. Real punk thug. It's not, it, this is not a guy you love to hate. This is a horrible human being. I don't want him on my team. I, 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 I couldn't even lie. I, 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 I tell you something. I wasn't real thrilled about getting uh, switching to baseball. Old A-Rod. And uh, it, one season he got his act together. But um, overall, the guy's a loser, too. There is something about, you know, like, I don't care as long as he puts, yeah, that's true, to a point. Yeah, you know, I could put up with some things. I mean, people are human, but I couldn't put up with Matt Cook. And I don't care if A-Rod was ever on the Yankees. Now he's just sucking money. So, I don't know, maybe we should just, like, move on to the news or something. What do you, th- what do you think, Jake? Kind of miss you, buddy. Yeah, going on vacation. I'm going on like a, a little uh, other vacation this year. Uh, three day getaway uh, with the old girlfriend. So uh, couldn't record on Tuesday. But you know what? I can't sleep now, so I'll probably put the show out tonight. And you'll probably see her if you very shortly after I'm done with it. Uh, no. Probably don't put any links or anything like that. Just a Boston rant, I guess. That's basically what it's going to be. Oh, well. Too bad. Eat me. Talk about some uh, stuff that's just uh, recently getting off the wire over here. Tonight, the uh, at least in the Western Conference, the Sharks and the Blues can clinch a playoff spot. Definitely going to give trouble to the Ducks and the Blackhawks of the world. Going to give those birds some 
trouble. Those Blackhawks. Well, I guess the Blackhawks are a tribe, right? Well, anyway, uh, yeah, you know, you never hear too much whining from um, American Indian uh, groups about the Blackhawks. I wonder why. Yeah, we name our helicopters after them. Uh, yeah, so sh- sharks in the uh, blues can uh, clench and uh, move on to the playoffs of Western Conference. Getting close to the game. I'm going to be picking the game. Here's here's how to play the game real quick. You get your playoff bracket. You pick your team that's going to win the series. You pick the game they're going to do it in. Prior to that, you pick. You have a chance to pick a Stanley Cup finalist and a Stanley Cup champion. Can be any team. Can be the same team twice. You pick the series. You get one point. You pick the series in the games. You get two points. You pick the finalist. You get three. You pick the champion. You get four. Those two are like tiebreakers. And you can pick the same team twice for the runner-up and the champion. There you go. That's the game. So, here we are. Uh, Vancouver and Los Angeles both clinched their spots. And uh, Red Wings fell in a shootout to the Canucks earlier in the week. Canucks wrapped it up. And... uh, didn't think I'd be saying this, but the Red Wings are looking at not being in the playoffs. Got a tough schedule coming up. I, something tells me they're going to pull it out, though. And I think the thing with the Detroit Red Wings is you're really, really getting to see what uh, absence of Nicholas Lidstrom has done to this team. Uh it, it's it, Hockey Town, they have to have the stars over there, a little like the Rangers that way. But uh, it might be rebuilding time. That last sort of piece of the uh, the sh- the uh, no, I guess even Datsuk when they when they won when they beat Sissy and the boys. But uh, you know, it might be time to move around his team. Be interesting to see what the uh, Red Wings do next year. You know, they got you know a superstar in the league. But I mean, this season with the lockout and what have you, it's just so strange, so bizarre. I don't know what are you gonna do? Crazy like that. As we all know, Mike Haynes, you know, if you didn't know, you know now, Mike Haynes, uh, co- <laughs> announcer of the uh, Colorado Avalanche, he's a fan. And maybe this belongs in the audio part. You know, this is probably the part I wanted most to do with Jake, and I just remembered it because I put it in the long, wrong folder. But uh, the um, the Lanch, I think at this point, yeah, it's on April 15th, on oh, good old tax day, they, uh, um, they're, they're playing the... Uh, Never say die, Columbus Blue Jackets. And uh, even though Colorado's already out of it, Mike Haynes still wants them to win. They're in overtime against the Blue Jackets. And um, they're uh, fighting real hard, trying to show some Lanch pride. Days of Peter Forsberg, Rob Blake, long gone. But uh, you got to hear this to believe it. They call it the greatest no-sell. But Duchesne is flying back. Polino shot score. (laughs) <laughs> and the Blue Jackets win in I gotta hear that four. again. Right, I'll give you a picture. Um, there's been a turnover in the neutral zone. Uh, jackets are moving in. They got a two on one. <laughs> it's great. Oh, gotta hear it. Back. Polino shot score. <laughs> and the Blue Jackets win in overtime. Four to three. Mike Hayes. Polino with his sixth goal Mike Hayes. He's a. Uh, and the Blue Jackets keep. My man's a fan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> two points tonight Score. I can hear it again. I, I, one more time. One more time. Hold on. Blue Jackets breaking out. Here it comes. Here, put on that. And the Blue Jackets win in overtime. Four to three. Nick Foligno with his sixth goal of the season. And the Blue Jackets keep their playoff hopes alive. Picking up two points tonight. With yeah. the victory. Yeah, well, it, it, it's funny. He, he's taking it hard. There's been some other calls out there. That recent OT game against Detroit where old Mike Haynes had a tough time. Score. Moving on, goal, Eddie. Scores. You take it. Boy, I'd never seen an announcer take it to heart like that. Usually, like, we heard, I see Sam Rose when I was a candidate. He'd be like, uh, oh, and the Rangers look dejected. Oh, John, it's got to be a tough offseason. 
Well, the Rangers, you know, I mean, you, know, you never heard just Sam go, oh, fuck this. This sucks. You never heard that. <laughs> score. It's score. <laughs> Jane, it's flying back. Three no shot score. <laughs> the Blue Jackets win in overtime. Four to three. I can lose that all day. Really could. Great. You know, you're supposed to you're supposed to go, Eddie shots, Eddie scores, and just at least like put some effort into it. But uh these um actually it's funny, the comment on this YouTube site by uh, Jesse Pinkman. Who the hell is he? I don't know. He's a guy I got I hate this commentator as much as I I hate uh Homer as uh, Jack Edwards from the Bruins. I don't care if they're Homers. I've said that before. I I could absolutely care less. How 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 can you um how can you get great moments uh, like this? One jackets, but Duchesne is flying back. He's flying back. <laughs> why do they have? Why? Why? Why can't they be biased? It's sports, not politics. In fact, you don't seem to mind it in politics. You don't mind. You don't seem to mind that uh, 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 Crank Unger, whatever his uh, douchebaggery name is. Hey, you know, Crank. You know, the, the country you hail from, Turkey. I'm sure they'd be really uh, into your views. Over there in Turkey, real, real accepting of your, your, uh, your, your views. We should go home, and buy a ticket. I don't have money, but I'd, I'd buy it. I'd find a way. You know, our, our, it's like we've come to a point in time where our, our uh, commentators can't be biased. Our sports commentators can't be biased, but our, the guys that give us the news can openly root for uh, certain ethnicities to commit crimes. That's essentially what they did, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I'm going to whine and cry about it. So I'm ticked. I'm angry. And you probably should be too. Eat me. Raw. Raw. <clears throat> there you go. I got as much class as Crank Hunger. Except I'm uh, man enough to admit it. <laughs> uh, Puck Daddy's reporting that um, National Predators player Brandon Yip. Uh, would be a uh, good good chance to win. Um, I don't know why. The cover of uh, NHL 14. Uh, now he's got a shot. I don't know why that's fucking news, but now that is Puck Daddy. You know what? Brandon Yip. Maybe. Fucking hooray. Brandon Yip. Step, 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 step. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Get me, get me straight, Joe. Get me straight. Yeah, we talked about um, Detroit Red Wings already. They are on uh, on watch. Uh, the Lightning fans, hockey centric prom proposal, and uh, I probably won't put a link up for this because I just simply don't have time. I have to get to bed. But uh, it's real cute. They uh, he put up. Uh, Hockey cards, little lightning symbols, the O, and wrote prom. Slow news week. <laughs> Slow news week over here. Ugh. Here's an interesting article out of uh, USA Today, and they live the top 10 key factors of uh, the NHL playoff race. I don't know about the race, but the playoffs itself. It, it, it's probably it's probably misleading. First of all, it, the first one on the list was Sidney Crosby's jaw and how it's going to affect them. You, although the Penguins seem to be recovering now, they they did seem to be emotionally affected by the uh, missing a sissy, which I don't get. But uh, yeah, it, it's it, you can't deny that it's had a huge impact. So can Crosby get back? Can he can he get back on his feet and uh, help this team into the playoffs? He is obviously an important. Even though the Penguins are stacked, he's. He's a very important part of this team. I mean, everybody had a heart attack over there with this guy who took one of the tooth. God, I thought the, I thought the announcers were going to get up and leave. Couldn't believe it. The other one would be um, Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, they're skating. Um, one of the best defensively teams in the league. It's funny for the Western Conference. They're stacked. Got one of the best players in the world, Patrick Kane. They can skate, skate, skate. Very, very fast hockey team. You watch any Boston, uh, Boston. Yeah, what's on my mind? If you watch a, a lot of Blackhawks games, and you, you really can see, uh, you can really see that these um, 
these skaters out there. They're really, there's something else. That's for sure. They're really great. Super duper. Uh, Patrice Bergeron's brain. Uh, we didn't cover it too much in the shot from the point. Uh, it was one of those things where I actually deleted it. But uh, Pat Patrice Bergeron um, took what looked like a, like almost uh, normal contact in a hockey game and went out with a concussion. He hasn't been back since. Now, the Bruins have sim since uh, picked up uh, Yarmir Yager. And uh, he's put some points on the board. But uh, that is interesting. This is the heart of this hockey team. Bergeron. Uh, and, and, and not only that, Boston's a little bit of a slide right now. A little bit of a slide. So, uh, uh, and I don't, Yager, Yager's probably too, too, too old to put this team in his back. Although he still can contribute. That's obvious. He's been a very good player this year. One of the better players in the league. Uh, the other thing is, my vote for the uh, mostly because I can't stand Crosby. Uh, my vote for the uh, the Hart Trophy would be uh, one Alexander Ovechkin, and we were burying him early in the season, but uh, apparently he heard us. He certainly turned it around, made it happen. He's got up to thirty goals, thirty goals in a shortened season. What did that mean? This guy was there. I mean, Mike Milbury, are you saying this guy's not a star? anymore i started to believe it but apparently he's connected with adam Oves. great job over there great job where the hell are these capitals at well they're first in their division which puts them third in the conference uh won their last game as of the time of this recording and what a turnaround it's spectacular what they've done over there and uh assuming this can continue and it's not a fluke, which I don't think it is. The, the, uh, the Washington Capitals is a very talented team. Um, but it looks like the guy, and, and Brendan Holtby, credit Brendan Holtby, good for getting together, looking very soft in the beginning of the season. So they didn't quit. They found a way. This team was, people are saying these guys are dead. That they would, they would be the first victims. They were sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic. Not the Atlantic. I'm thinking of the Flyers. What a disappointing season they've had. Treacherous. Sad. Where was Claude Giroux this year? Why wasn't Drew a factor after putting on that performance last year? It wasn't just Ilya. It wasn't him. That team sucks. They suck. Except for Wayne Simmons. I like him. Because he's black. No, I like Wayne Simmons. He's big. He's tough. Put in the net. And he can punch your teeth out. That's the kind of hockey player I like. Canadian. Style. North American style. I don't know. I don't know. What is... That's a good question for the folks that like to listen to this crap. What is a good... What's a North... We, we know what Canadian style is. It is We know what Russian style is. The Czechs and, and the way uh, Swedes kind of build their players. What is American style hockey? Is it exactly like Canadian? Well, they don't necessarily come to... They don't, we don't have junior leagues in America. You know, what kind of players do we produce? Patrick Kane... I mean, I don't really. I mean, Ronick was pretty fancy. He had a lot of, a lot of offensive weapons. But I mean, yeah, I guess guys like Jeremy Ronick, Mike Medano, strong skaters. I don't know. What's an American hockey player? What's their stereotype? I'd like to know. In this article in USA Today, the uh, Penguins also come into it again. Uh, this will play a huge factor, and I'm uh, I'm getting the impression this guy's leaning towards a Penguins Stanley Cup victory. Uh, they're uh, improved. Uh, they this, you know, Ginla, Morrow. These guys have uh, improved their cast. Could these trades be effective? They're starting to seem to be gelling now. So uh, Iggy had a fight the other night. Showed those Penguin fans what a real hockey player looks like at the end of his career. But definitely a weird deal. What have you heard that? Here's an interesting number six on the list. Uh, the New York Islanders defense. Heavy hitting and definitely one of the most dangerous, dangerous, um, dangerous uh, players in the league. Tavares. Underrated. 
because he plays over in the island because nobody cares. But uh, now he's got a few goals this year, too. I mean, top five. Tough to hate that guy, as Jersey Jason Latch says. Tough to, um, tough to hate that guy. Uh, I guess this would more to do with the playoff race, so it was more consistent with the headline of the article. Uh, Blue Jackets. Let me read this from the article from Kevin Allen. What about Bob? The Blue Jackets. Hopes of making the playoffs for the second time in the team's history. Jesus, that means Kevin Nash was only, or Rick Nash was only in uh, one playoff. That's unbelievable. Blue Jackets hope of making the playoffs for the second time in the team's history on Sergei Babarotsky's ability to stop the puck. Not hearing too much about Mr. Bobrovsky. But now you are, because they're about to knock out the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> he has been among the best NHL net miners since the beginning of March. Over the past 21 games, he's given up one or no goals 14 times. But you know, Lundqvist can't get a damn shot out. Even today, 4-1. to One, mm, one shot out this year. Great stats, but one shot out. Bobrovsky. Someone to think about. The Sharks. I don't like the Sharks personally. Um, I think they're one of those teams that come in there, look good, fade. I don't like the leadership of Joe Thornton. Yeah, probably because he said something about my team a few years ago. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think. I think if, if George, Joe was the player that we were all expecting uh, him to be, he'd have showed it by now. Um, Brendan Morrow is a streaky player. I don't really think too much of those San Jose Sharks. I am more than likely, I think I'm going to pick them going out of the first round, depending on who they match up with. Number 10, Wings, we talked about them. That's a factor in the West. It's going to look a little weird out there without the Red Wings. And the uh, get it done for, what, the last 20 years? Not in the playoffs. I got to check out the last time they didn't make the playoffs. That's got, that should be interesting. Penty Lund. Know who he is? Probably not. He's the first Finnish star, and I would say star, to break it in the NHL. And, of course, he did that with the New York Rangers and picked up a Calder Trophy in 1949, a year after my father was born. <laughs> uh, Penty, uh, unfortunately, left us in, uh, at the age of 87. But it is interesting. He is the first guy to do it. Um, Mr. Lunn had a stroke a quarter, according to his daughter. This coming from um, Richard Goldstein, the New York Times. There's been more than 160 Finns that have played in the NHL, but long before the league has been attracting many of the world's best hockey players, Lunn won the Calder Trophy as the NHL's top rookie and turned a brilliant performance in the Stanley Cup playoffs for the second season. Wait a minute. Second season? Well, the Rangers went to the playoffs in 1950. I thought they didn't make the playoffs a whole decade. No, he won the Calder. It is interesting to me because I, I really didn't realize, that I, did, I didn't think the Europeans started breaking in until the 80s. So it shows what I know. I know Stan Mikita over there in Black, the Blackhawk land, but I, I, I wasn't aware. But um, it's, uh, it's always sad when um, we hear about those, those old timers. Uh um, leaving us. Um, generations long gone by. Hockey in the 40s. Be lying if I said I knew a lot about it, but I like to see more of those classic things. Classically, I'm we're getting some new TV in here, some uh, classic channels, and maybe it's this summer. I'll take some time to look at some of those old games, learn about them. I like that stuff. I don't think it's boring. I don't even mind watching black and white. Yeah, sure, old time hockey, like Eddie Shore. Like Eddie Shore, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Penty Lund, thanks for being a New York Ranger, and uh, we wish the best to your family. Yeah, we talk about uh, players, um, of all generations. I've I've recently noticed that um, Chris Pronger, Philadelphia Flyers, former Hoffer Wheeler. Former St. Louis Blue, one of the maybe one of the meanest players to ever pick up a hockey stick. Uh, kind of like him personally. This is from a 
I guess this goes in the audio files. But uh, I got this. Um, this was in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2010. And uh, this is just Pronger messing with the press. Take away. You guys Richie. played a disciplined game yesterday. But do you think as a team you played physically enough? No. What do you want me to say? <laughs> There's two parts to your question. Yes. Because it doesn't make any sense. It's a disciplined game. You stayed out of the box, which, you know, it's a different experience for you guys. But, you know, it almost felt like maybe it was a little bit too quiet. Do you feel like you need to pick up the aggression a little bit? So you don't want us to play disciplined? <laughs> I'm not trying to coach this team. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know what you're trying to How about forming a question? How about forming a question? Yes, I dropped the mic during the thing. They don't even ask questions. It's like they... I don't even know what they do. They try to flower up the language or something. I have a one question. I guess maybe because they have to get two in. One question. Hey, Chris, do um, you think you played physical enough to win this game? And ask me. I'm... Do you I'm think... Yeah. Penalties. Maybe it's because you weren't playing physical enough. Okay, so should we take more penalties? Is that the question? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you just... Is that your question, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought she was asking the question. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Uh, can we play more physically? Absolutely. I don't think we need to take penalties in doing so, but I think we got off track a little bit by not getting the puck in deep and, and being physical in that respect. Um, you know, if we take a couple penalties, so be it. I don't think we were worried about taking penalties. I think we just got off track and, and started to play a little bit their game, a little more run and gun, and uh, you know, fed into their hand a little bit. Two more, Chris. I'll ask a message to the room that. Uh, uh, we, I, I don't have any confidence in him right now. I mean, you're all saying that it was your fault for what happened last night. I mean, not to go back to him. <coughs> what do you think that says to the team? Well, I don't think he's made up his mind, so it would probably be premature for me to speculate or say anything on the matter, Tim. I don't think I will, because I don't like the way you phrased your question. <laughs> Ah, it's unbelievable. You know, I, this is going back to the uh, the 2010 Stanley Cup final against the Blackhawks, which, uh, of course, Pryor would eventually go on to lose. He did win one with uh, Anaheim, now that I'm thinking of it. It was in 2007. And uh, I just enjoy the way he uh, deals with um, professional douches. And he sounds like he actually can talk, and they ask their dumb questions. Can't, can't be forward. It's just too difficult. Too difficult. You can't just say... Uh, do you think this? Do you think that? How is this? How is it? How about yeah? You know, it. They ask questions that that they want to generate specific answers to, and they're the toughest questions to answer because they're not truly questions. They're trying to initiate the response that they want to hear, and uh, he knows that. He figured it out, and he fucks with them. Good. Good. I hate hockey, and I don't like kids. That's right. That's news. A little uh, hockey audio file. Disorganized. That's right. All right. Uh, that means it's plugs time. Hit it. All right. Let's do this. John Freeman Music dot com. John Freeman Music dot com. John Freeman Music dot com. John Freeman is playing and wrote the music. The music is called "The Shot to the Point" and it's playing along. He can write you music for your podcast or for whatever, whatever you might need it for. He's a professional musician. Hey, record company, sign this guy. He's a studio musician. He does it all. He plays guitar. Does everything. He can do it all. Keyboard, guitar, bass. Bass. What a bitchin' bass line for this song. Don't think so? Fuck off. Yeah. Jerk. I'd also like to check you to check out my uh, co-host, normal co-host, um, on Twitter, at Jake Link Comedy. Jake Link is a comedian in the East Coast, specifically New Jersey, but I'm sure he'll be available for bookings. Please contact Jake Link Comedy at Jake Link Comedy on Twitter. Book him. See his witty responses. A big part of this show. Funny guy. Well, at least I think so. 
He's also in, de- 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 you know, duress right now, and he needs a gig. Those Devils are not going to the playoffs. I wonder if that's really sunk in yet. <laughs> I wonder if it's sunk in. The Joe Cornyn Show! Joe Cornyn Show. We actually list Mr. Cornyn in our channel. He's a friend of this show. And uh, we should be working with him real soon. Of course, his Boston Bruins are quite secure for the uh, their uh, up-and-coming Stanley, Cl- Stanley Cup playoff run. Mr. Cornyn deals with rage, anger, pro wrestling in the Boston Bruins. Professional radio announcer. I think he's looking for a professional. It has a great channel. Stock full with information. His other channels, too. And check out the Joe Cornyn Show. Probably gave us our um, best bit. Step, 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 step. That's right. And there's more to the Joe Cornyn Show. All right. That's it. We're done. I don't care anymore. Uh, Sorry I didn't cover as much hockey as I normally do. And uh, maybe I wasn't as funny or as, as joyful as I normally am. I... Don't want to sit here and say like, oh my god, I'm I'm so affected by that. But I, I guess I was. It just came over me, and uh, I get mad like anybody. Oh, well, no apologies, believe me. But uh, nice to see they got those guys. And it's gonna be nice to find if they're connected to something, and so we can stop something before it happens again. Martin Richard Brothers. Why, you didn't hear me? I said Martin Richard. <laughs>